Originally, I was planning to record this video outside, but then I realized it was probably going to rain out there, so here we are. Now, what I want to talk about today was why my videos end up being as long as they actually are, because occasionally someone will ask me, hey, this video is 15 minutes long, why isn't it 8 minutes long? Or, hey, I could have made this video at 8 minutes long, why is it so and so length? So... I don't think that my videos are necessarily that long. If I was making, you know, 20, 25, 30 minute videos every day, yeah, you could definitely say that my videos probably are too long at that point. And when I do do videos that are longer than 20 minutes, I try to make sure that those videos are actually valuable and you're not just sitting through 20 minutes of filler. But in the realm of 15 to 20 minutes, I feel like those videos are probably as long as they need to be. Now, I have been trying to shorten them down a little bit because there is some things that I'm saying that don't necessarily need to be said or I'm saying things in a more long-winded way than they necessarily need to be. But I think that even then, my shortest videos are probably going to still remain in the realm of like 12 to 17-ish minutes. So... The big reason why I make my videos like I do is because back when I first started using Linux, that was pretty much when I first started using my channel, or start first started making videos on my channel. And back then, I noticed that there was a problem that I had with a lot of Linux creators out there. So this isn't necessarily a problem if you've been watching Linux videos for a while or you've been using Linux for a while, but when you first start out with it, you may have forgotten if you've been using Linux for years, but things like how to configure Vim, or where your config file is located, or how to install a Vim plugin, or how to install something from the AUR. These might seem basic if you've been using Linux for a while, but when you're first starting out with it, these are not basic concepts, and skipping out on this context can actually make the videos a lot harder to follow, especially things like where your config file is located if you just suddenly jump to a configuration file. Now, in my recent videos, I have just been jumping directly to stuff, but... I still think there was some value early on actually showing that because I wasn't 100% sure how that actually worked. And if I'm not 100% sure and I had just started using Linux a couple of weeks ago, I guarantee the people who also started using Linux a couple of weeks ago would also have the exact same problem. So because I was new to Linux at the time, my videos were sort of reflecting what I also knew. Now, because I've been using Linux for much longer now, I have been stripping some of that stuff out, but also part of the reason I've been stripping some of that stuff out is because I've made so many videos at this point where I have said, this is how you install something with Yay, this is how you install a Vim plugin, this is how you do so-and-so thing, that... If someone is unsure about that, I can always say, okay, if you're unsure about this one point, you can go watch this video or go watch this very short segment of this video and you'll understand very quickly what I'm trying to say. Or if that video doesn't exist, I can always just answer them directly in the comment section. I'd rather not have people also have to go watch every single video on my channel to understand, I guess, the context of what I'm trying to say. So I'm not a big fan of doing long series. Sometimes I will do follow-up videos. And in those cases, obviously, you do need the context of the previous video. But if I can try, I try to avoid doing things where you need to have some really long context of what's going on on my channel. Because I understand there's a lot of people who watch one video on a channel, and then never watch another one. So if you're going to be watching one video, you, I guess, want to have that video be everything you need to know. So obviously I can't cover everything, otherwise every single video would be how to install Linux and then how to start using Linux and then get actually eventually get to my point. Every video would be like seven hours long. Obviously there's a point where making it self-contained is sort of unreasonable. There's a minimum level of knowledge I sort of have to assume, but I think that the level that I'm assuming it to be at is probably at a safe level where the videos are still accessible for new Linux users without being, I guess, so boring for someone who is using Linux for 5, 6, 10, 15 years. So, yes, I can make them less self-contained, but for now, I think they are probably good at the point they're actually at. I will keep working on my format, but for now... 
I think it's probably fine in that regard. Now, the other thing is that a lot of the topics that I end up covering tend to be longer topics. So what I like to do on this channel is a lot of software showcases. And if I want to properly showcase a piece of software, I cannot do a five minute video. I know that some people will do like very quick overviews of like, here's a piece of software I'm using, this is the end of the video. That's not what I want these videos to be. I want these videos to be, okay, here is the software, here's what it's good at, here's what you can do with it, here's the like how to use it, here are the problems with it. And when you do a video like that, you can't do a five minute video, you can't do that as a five minute video and do it well. Obviously, it can be done, but it would be really, really rushed. If I tried to, I guess, look at something like, say, I don't know, NeoVim. We'll go NeoVim. If I tried to do a video on NeoVim and I tried to do that as a five-minute video, being like, okay, here, here's NeoVim. Here's what it can do. Here's the problems with it. Here's some other stuff with it. If that was five minutes long, I would probably be saying like one point for every single section. And that video would be kind of worthless at that point. Whereas if I then took the same video and then did it as a 15 minute video, as a 20 minute video, there's a lot more that I can actually say. And that's without even repeating myself because when it's a piece of software that's that big, there is so much that you can say about it and there's so much valuable you can say about it that you really cannot shorten that down past the 10 minute mark. Obviously, if you wanted to just hit on the absolute major points and nothing but the major points, you probably could do it. But the major points aren't the only reason why you might want to use a piece of software. So for example, I did a video on TIG recently and TIG is a Git UI. And being a Git UI, there's a lot of things you can do with it. So some people, when they use Git, they only work with a single branch and just commit directly to that branch. So should I make a Git video just talking about working on the master branch or should I also talk about, you know, merging in branches and also working with remotes and working with stashes and cherry picking and all of this other stuff that Git can do that even though it's not absolutely major for the way that you have to use Git, it's still really important stuff that people who do want to use that functionality will probably want to know. So even though it's not absolutely fundamental to the way the application works, it's still very important to cover. And the other thing is, as I said, we're talking about the problems with the application. This is a thing that I noticed that a lot of people tend to skip over. They'll talk about, okay, here's what the application is great at, here's why I like it, and that's sort of the end of the video. But then don't really mention that, I guess, under certain situations, it might have some issues working with some feature, whether this is, let's just go with the Git example again. So maybe the Git UI you're using doesn't have the ability to work with remotes, for example. I feel like if I'm not covering that in that video, I'll sort of be disingenuous about what the software is actually capable of. If I said, this is a great piece of software, and then don't mention the fact that you can't work with remotes or that you can't merge branches in, I feel like I would be skipping out on something that's pretty important for most people who want to use that. And if they went and downloaded that and then started using it and I had said it was a great piece of software and they realized, oh, there's this sort of important functionality that was skipped over, I feel like they would take my opinion on the software a bit less seriously. So even though, as I said, it's not fundamental, it's still very important to what I'm trying to say. Now, if I start doing, you know, just the sort of, here's the thing I'm using, here's the end of the video. If I start doing videos like that, yeah, maybe I will do those as five minutes. But for now, I'm sort of happy with the videos that I'm making and I'm happy with doing the software showcases. And the final reason actually has to do with the way that YouTube itself is structured. So if you've ever watched a commentary channel, you might notice that every single video they uploaded up until July 2020, was going to be longer than 10 minutes. Now it's gonna be longer than eight minutes, but up until July, it was longer than 10 minutes. The reason for this is because after 10 minutes, this is where YouTube will let you add mid-rolls to your videos. And there's a twofold reason why this is important. So the first reason obviously is that the creator will make more money from this, but the major reason is that YouTube is much more likely to actually push a video that is longer than 10 minutes. And you might say, well, what about this channel that only uploads two minute videos and they all have millions of views and the channel has millions of subscribers? Yes, there are exceptions, but for the most part, 
most channels have to upload videos that are longer than 10 minutes. This is basically just the way that YouTube is set up. So now it's been reduced to eight minutes and you'll notice that a lot of commentary channels also now make videos that are only eight minutes long. But because I was working with that 10 minute framework for so long, I sort of built myself a format where I'm providing, I think a lot of value in a video that is longer than 10 minutes. So I'm sort of in this mindset where I'm still making videos that are that long, even though they don't, they don't necessarily need to be. And I don't really think that I can short them down to being like eight minutes long at this point. So I'm probably going to keep them longer, even though in the way that YouTube is set up now, they don't have to be longer. So when I do those videos, I try to still provide value in them, but I can short them down if I really, really wanted to without actually hurting the discoverability of my channel. But as I've said throughout this video, I'm probably not going to be doing so. I am going to still keep shaving stuff out as I feel like stuff can be shaved out. But my videos are probably going to stay in the realm that they currently are. So if they are too long for you, not much is really going to change there. I would recommend, you know, pausing the video and coming back to it. Or, you know, as I said, you can very easily watch it while you're having a meal usually you're not going to eat in less than 15 minutes unless you're just trying to devour all your food. So yeah, I hope that actually answers the question. This video has been a massive pain to record. Usually when I do a video like this outside, somehow I managed to do it perfectly on the first take. You put me in this room though, and I make mistakes constantly. So I don't know, there's something about this room that makes me more conscious of the mistakes maybe, or maybe more conscious of what I'm trying to say. I have no idea. So anyway, I'm going to end the video here, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinion, Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony, Donald, John, Marek, Mikel, Spagin, Taze, and Zilva. If you want to go support my work, there'll be some links down below, as well as the link to my podcast, which is called Tech Over T. It is just hours and hours of rambling nonsense and... Hopefully you'll enjoy it. That is available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version is available basically anywhere you can listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to go check out this channel available on Library, BitChute, BitChute, and a bunch of other platforms as well. And remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.